All right, fellow YouTubers, uh, I'm going to show you how to align your Orion telescope with the GoTo system. So this is the 127 millimeter MacCast GoTo telescope by Orion, and I want to kind of just show you how I align my scope. Now, the first one of the first things you need to do before you ever take your scope out at night is you need to take it out during the day, and you've got to align your scope and your finder together so that you know. Uh, that you're pointing at the right star. So the way you do that is you take your scope out, point it down the road, find a stoplight, find a telephone pole, something you know what it is that's about, I don't know, a quarter mile, half a mile away, something like that. Point your scope at it, focus it up, and then what you do is you take your finder scope, turn your little dot finder on, and it's pointed close to that, but then you adjust the two little screws on the front and the back until that little dot is right in the middle of where your scope is pointing. Once you've done that, you know that your scope is lined up correctly, and then when you point it at things at, at night, using your finder scope, that your telescope will be pointed at that. So it's very important to do that before you ever take your scope out and try to do any type of alignment, or it'll be really, really frustrating. So, now what I do with mine is the first thing you wanna do once you set your telescope up, I use an app on the iPhone called The Compass, and you can search for it, but it looks like this. And there's two features on The Compass. There's actually a compass, and there's actually this leveling thing, and what I do is I, you need to make sure your telescope is level, okay? And for some reason, there it goes. Um, so that's pretty close. The, the case is probably throwing it off just a little bit. But you want to make sure your telescope is level uh, before you ever start trying to align anything to it. So I use that to just kind of make sure it's level. So we'll take our little wand here, and I am running version 4.5.9 of Sync Scan. And, uh, you know, you just hit enter and it gives you this warning uh, every time, you know, don't look at the sun directly. The first thing it's going to want is the longitude. So there's a couple ways to do that. I typically use my iPhone. And as you can see, at the bottom of the Compass app, it gives you your longitude and your latitude. So that's my longitude. That's my latitude where I'm currently at. And uh, I would use these numbers and put those in. There's one other way to get your longitude and latitude. And you can use Google Earth if you don't have uh, an iPhone or something with that ability. Before you go out, if you know where you're gonna be at, look it up on Google Earth. And again, this is where I'm at. Uh, right here at the bottom of Google Earth, it gives you your longitude and your latitude. And so that's another way that you can find out what your longitude and latitude is supposed to be for wherever you may be at. <clears throat> so let's put our longitude in. The first thing, let me get my phone back out here. All right, so we want it to, to be, okay, so this is the west setting. So we're gonna be 94, which I currently am already, 94 by 12. So as you can see down here, 94, 12. And that, the, you know, the hundredths place or whatever that is, uh, don't really worry about that, that doesn't matter. So once you get it set, we're on W for West, because that's the West setting, 9412, enter. Now it's going to ask for uh, latitude. So my latitude is going to be close again, 36, which I already am. And 22 here, I was at 27 earlier. 22, enter. Okay, now time zone. My time zone is negative 6, and this is where I found a bug in the software. So right there it says negative 6. Sometimes it's on positive, uh, and I need to go back. Yes, that's correct. That's correct. So it needs to be negative six. There's a little bug in the software for whatever, like I just set it to plus and it went back to negative. You kind of just have to play with that back and forth until it finally stays with where it's supposed to be at. But the way you figure it out, I'm central time, so I'm, I'm a negative six. And it starts out in Greenwich mean, mean time. Let me show you a little, a little map that came with the telescope. This is the appendix B of the manual right here. And as you can see, we've got zero and it goes backwards. You start counting backwards from the center line and negative one, negative two, negative three, four, five, and six. As you can see, center of the United States is negative six, so I'm in central time. If you're on the east coast, it's negative five. If you're in mountain time, it's negative seven. If you're on the west coast, it's negative eight. So you need to set that time according to where you are uh, in the northern hemisphere or wherever you may be in the world. Um, you can use a little map like this or find a little map online, I'm sure, of uh, how to adjust that, but that's important. So for me, it's negative six. So that's my time zone. All right, the date today is 
29, 2015. So I'll enter the date, 01, 29, 2015. And the time right now, military time, of course, um, and my phone, I usually set my phone to military time when I'm trying to do it. Right now it's 12-hour time, but it's the same because it's not past 12 o'clock. So it's 11 Sometimes what I'll do is I'll wait for it to actually change so I get it precisely. I'm not sure if that affects it um, all that much or not, but just to be precise, you can sit there and wait for your clock to switch over. I don't know if it's going to any, any moment now if we're going to wait or if we're going to just keep going here. Let's see. We'll wait 10 more seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. There it was. 11.02. Daylight savings time? Yes for me. Begin alignment. So this is where we're going to start at. Yes. And I usually do the brightest star method. There's a couple of others, I believe. Um... Boom, boom, boom. If you use, yeah, two star alignment, brightest star. So I'll do brightest star. Uh, and then now it's going to ask you to select your region. If you were, it depends on where you're at and what your obstructions are. I usually always do the the southern sky. Typically is where I start because where I use my telescope at, that's the easiest to see. So it just depends on what's the easiest to see. I think there's more things in the southern sky to align to, but that could just be me. Um, so it just depends on where you're at. So we'll do southern sky. Now it's going to bring up possible things. I would not suggest aligning to a planet. You want to find a star. So like Antares, Mer or not Mercury, um, Altar. So here's, here's how I do this. So since I don't know the night sky all that well, what I'm going to do is I have a little program. It's on my phone, but we're currently using my phone to shoot with. So it's on my iPad. And uh, it's called Starry Night. So if you shake it, kind of like this, it starts to give you, yeah, I'm pointed, pointed west. Woo. Hang on, let me restart this. It kind of got confused. And then we'll search for it. It's called Star Walk. So I use this little program called Star Walk. It's a pretty good little program. It'll boot up here in a second. It's got nice little graphics and things to it. So here we are in Starwalk. Now when you shake it like this, it kind of figures out where it's at. And that is uh, basically north from here. So what I do is I come over here to search, a little search feature, feature and it's wanting uh, Alt Altier, how do you say that? So I'll start searching for that. There's Altier. So I'll I'll hit that, and now I've got a little arrow, and it tells me I'm gonna follow it. Follow, 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 until I find, there's Altier. So now I can look up in the night sky and know what I'm looking at, say, oh, okay, it's, it's in this constellation. Um, all I need to do is kind of find that pattern of stars. Once I find that star, okay. So now I come over to my telescope, and I say, okay, we're gonna find this star. And so you hit enter, and it says point the scope to that. So. I'm inside a room right now, so it's gonna be really hard to do that, but what I'll do is I'll come up, you know, look through my finder scope, find that star, you know, I can take my reference again, make sure I know where I put it right on it, and then I'm gonna look through my eyepiece and focus it up until I get that star right in the middle. Now, the next thing I like to do, and that I've noticed with this alignment, is if you'll take your time and really try to zero in on this alignment, I'm gonna grab my doubler, and what I like to do is double in and get even closer because the closer in and the more precise you can be at this point with the aligning that particular star, the more accurate your scope's going to be. So now I've doubled in and so now I'm going to, I'm going to even focus up again and then I'm going to center that, that star back in the piece. You know, you can change uh, the rate of the scope by hitting rate and then hitting a number like five, five or four is a good one. You hit enter, and now you've got that rate again, and so it slows your scope down, so you can kind of move around nice and slow. Center that star up. Once it's in centered, you're going to hit enter, and it's going to say, is it centered in the eyepiece? Center in the eyepiece. You know, we've been doing that. We've got the, the doubler in, so we've, we've zoomed in. You can even use this as a 20, I think, 
uh, yeah, a 25 millimeter eyepiece. You can use a, a 10 or you know 15 or 7 or whatever to try to get in as close as you can. Um, but you want to get as close as you can and center it in so that it's the accurate, it's the most accurate. So you hit enter. Say so now it's going to give you options of second stars to choose from. And so it's better to try to spread the stars out as far as you can. So if you've got one in the southern sky, you want to go like eastern, western, or northern. You want to kind of get as as far away as you can. So I'm not sure where that particular star is. Uh, Alioth will hit enter. Now the scope, once you have pointed it at one, it's gonna should get somewhat close to wherever this other star is. Again, I can come over here to my star seeker and Alioth, I believe, there it is. Oh, and it's saying, okay, now I'm back over here. I'm gonna go, oh, it's in the Boots constellation. It's right to the right of it, so it's right there. So my scope should turn all the way around as it's doing and kind of point in this general direction, okay? It's gonna slew all the way over and around. And you can see the scope doing that. It's moving and it's gonna kind of stop here in just a minute where it knows, based upon where I told it the other star was, which I wasn't very accurate because again, I'm in a room. So it's gonna point it over there. So now we go through the same process. We take out the doubler, use just the 25, get it kind of centered, put the doubler back in, center it up, get it uh, clear, put it in the center of the eyepiece, hit enter, and it's gonna say alignment successful. So there's no beeps or anything that I know of. It just says alignment successful. You hit enter and there you go. Now you're, it should be um, aligned. So now you can start looking at planets. I just hit the planet key and there's Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn. And what we'll do here is we'll try to look at the moon, for example. So if I hit moon, uh, oh, it's below the horizon, of course, because it's the middle of the day. So let's see, uh, I don't know what's out right now. Jupiter may be out. Nope, it's below the horizon. Let's see if Saturn is. I don't know, because I'm doing this in the middle of the day. I don't know what is out, and I didn't look before I started this. Okay, Saturn. We can look at Saturn. So it kind of gives you where it's at, view objects. Now the scope's going to automatically go there. The last thing I want to show you that you can do, you can see it moving around, and you want to wait until this, it kind of slows down at one point. It doesn't mean it's done. You want to kind of wait till the numbers for the most part, stop moving. Um, I mean, it's going to move a little bit because it's going to slew with the object that you're looking at. So it's going to move, you know, ever so slightly. But you want to kind of let it get it settled in. Um, and what you'll notice is it may not be exactly in the center of the eyepiece, and it may be you may not see it in the center of the eyepiece, especially if you're doubled in or you have a a smaller uh, millimeter. So uh, right now, if my alignment was correct, Saturn would be over uh, this way, and see it's still still slewing. Okay, now we're there. So now once you have Saturn, you can kind of center it up. The thing that you can do here is if it's not in the center of the eyepiece, you can center Saturn in the, in the center of the eyepiece at this point, hold down the escape key, and it's gonna say recenter object. So you move your scope around where Saturn actually is, you know, because it's off just a little bit. Uh, after you hold the escape, the escape key down for like three or four seconds, it'll, it'll give you this little dialog recenter object. So you line it back up, put Saturn right in the middle of the eyepiece, hit enter, and it's going to say, oh, okay, now I know exactly where it's at again. So if you're looking at the moon, I found like after I've aligned my scope and I've got it set on the moon, sometimes it won't like center in exactly on the moon again. So I'll hold down escape, kind of recenter it to what I think is the center, hit enter, and it'll kind of, you know, recenter. And I've never adjusted my slewing rates or anything, but uh, once I've done that, it's been pretty close. Um, will it be exactly accurate and will it get you exactly on everything? No, it's not going to. I mean, it's just kind of the reality of what it is. It's going to get you really, really close. You should be able to see the object or move around just a little bit and find the object. And then you just do that little recentering feature. And once you've done that uh, for the object, it should pretty much go right back to where it's at. Once I did the recentering, it pretty much stayed right where it was, unless one of my kids bumped the telescope or something, you know, like that and threw it off. So, anyway, that's how I centered my telescope. Hopefully, that's been helpful. Hopefully, that kind of gives you an idea of uh, maybe a way that you can do it or approach it. So hope that helps. There you go.